Hi, this is Bart Polson. This video is a walkthrough of an exercise from Learn Python the Hard Way by Zed Shaw. You can get to the text by going to his website, learnpythonthehardway.org, and then clicking on Read the Free HTML Online. Click on that, you'll get to the table of contents, and in this video, we're going to be looking at exercise 20, which is called Functions and Files. Now, if you click on that title, it's going to take you to this page. And what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to um, open up a file and to print it all out and then to go through it one step at a time using an incrementing function, which is something that we're going to deal with a lot more later on. We're also going to define uh, several custom functions in this one. So here's the text and I'm going to go into Text Wrangler and go through it bit by bit for you. So in my text editor, I'm using Text Wrangler on my Mac. This is the first thing that you want to type. It's from sys import argv. Now remember, this is a way of adding some code, a module is called. Uh, some, in other programming languages, you call it a library, but here it's called a module. It's a, it's a little bit of code that you can import to make your life easier, bring in some extra functions. So you need to tell it where it's coming from. This one's coming from, from sys for system and uh, exactly what it is. And we're importing the module argv for argument variables. And here's where we fill it in. And what these are is when we click Python here, we type out Python, we type the name of the script, which in this case is going to be ex20.py. We also need to put in an input file because it's going to be reading a file, so it needs to have something to read from. And we specify that right here in the command line in Terminal or PowerShell when we're running the program. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second one is we're going to create a function here that displays the entire text of the document. So what we have here is we do def for define the function, and we're going to call it print underscore all. Remember, it needs to be one word. And then we have a, an argument here. We're going to put in one piece of information. Now, uh, this is a variable. You can call it whatever you want. Z is calling it f for file. It makes sense, it's easy to deal with, but if you want to write out the word file or the file that we're going to read or whatever, you have that choice. But he's just going to call it f for file, and this function is going to do one thing. It's going to print or, again, display to the console the contents of that file by taking the object file, that's the thing that we just read in, that uh, whose name is going to be represented through the variable f. We're going to type in the name of a file, but that's going to get fed through here. And it's going to use the dot operator and then use the read function or method to uh, display the entire text. So don't use a giant text. You're going to have an enormous amount of text to display. OK, next we're going to create another function called rewind, which is built to go back to the beginning of a file. So we're going to define it call it rewind, and then we're using the same file here. So the nice thing is we have this variable f um, that we get from the input arguments. And so we just come here and we're going to say for the object f, do this method or this function, seek, and this is a built-in function. And it means to go to a particular place in the file and the zero this is bytes. Uh, remember, uh, this is how you specify size in, in computer files. Zero means go to the beginning, Re sort of it's return all the way to the beginning. It's a rewind button. All right, then what we're gonna do is create another function that goes through the file one line at a time. Again, we define it, give it a name, print the line, and then in uh, parentheses, put the arguments if we have any. The first argument is going to be called line count. And the second one is going to be f, which again is the file name. You close the parentheses, and then you have the colon at the end to indicate that you are done with the title. And now you're going to get into the actual functions of the uh, of the well of the custom function. And it's indented for spaces. And this one is going to print. It's going to go to the line count, and then it's going to go to that paper that we've asked it to the the meaning the uh, the text file. And then it's going to use another built-in function called or method called read line, which will print out one line at a time. And obviously, in this case, it's going to be counting things not one letter or one byte at a time, but one line at a time. All right, we're going to do one more thing. We're going to take the input file and we're going to open it, uh, which is how Python's able to read it. And we're going to 
assign that information, the, the equal sign is the assignment operator. It means take a value and put it into this variable and the variable or object that we're dealing with is called current file. We're gonna refer back to that one in a minute. So this text right here, print, let's print the whole file, is gonna display over here in the console. And then it's actually gonna do our custom function here, which we created right here, print all, and then current file is the file that is going to print. And we defined it right here with all of this. And input file, excuse me, the input file got defined here in our argv when we typed in, when we did Python exercise 20, and we type in the name of the file. All right, then, so it's gonna print out all the lines. I'm gonna use just my three line haiku that I got from Ron Paget. Then it's gonna rewind which means, again, that's a function that we created. It says, go back to the beginning of the current file. It doesn't show anything. It just backs it up. And then from there, we're gonna print one line at a time using this function, print a line, which relies on the built-in read line function. So we say print a line, and we have to give two arguments to it. One is the line count, and the, the, or rather that means which line is it that you want to print, and then the name of the file that you're gonna read it from. And so we're gonna use current line, which is um, a variable that we defined right above it. So we're saying line one, that's where we're starting. And current file, now we define that one right here to be the input file, and we define that one way up here. So you see how it all cycles back to where we came from. So we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna do it two more times using what's called an incrementing function where we're gonna call on current line again, but we're gonna redefine it by saying add one to it each time it goes through. So that means start with line one, then add one to that variable, so we're at two, then print it all out again, then add another one, so we're at line three. My file has three very, excuse me, has three lines, so it's gonna print the whole thing, but you'll see how it works. Anyhow, using the custom functions is a big deal, something we're gonna use a lot, uh, seek, and open are important for getting two particular places in files. The read line is going to come up again. And then this way of incrementing and stepping through something one at a time. Again, take a variable, do whatever it is, add one to it, do whatever it is, add another to it, do whatever it is. That comes up about a million times. So you're going to get familiar with it. So I have a file over here. This right here, x20, is the actual Python file. You see it's got the same text. And then I've got a, uh, a text file that's just my three lines of the haiku. All right, here we go. I'm gonna type in Python. So the command line knows to run this as a Python file. I'm gonna type in the name of the script. Remember, that's the first thing I have to put in from right over here. Then I need to put the name of the input file, the thing I'm gonna copy. You know what, I'm just gonna come down here and copy that out of there and paste it right there. All right, this should run when I hit return. Great, it says first, let's print the whole file. That is from this line right here. Then it runs this function. Remember we did print all, and that shows every line. Now, if you had a thousand lines in your file, it's gonna show a thousand lines. It's gonna take you a long time to scroll through all of it. Mine's only three, so there it all is. You see, again, it read it from this file right there. There we go. Then we have this line, now let's rewind, kind of like a tape. That's what we got. And so it backed up to the beginning and says, let's print three lines. And that's what printed right here. And then it goes through one at a time. The first line you see, it says one, first three syllables. That's the first line of my file. Then it increments, meaning it, it takes the current line variable, which we defined as one, meaning the first line, adds one to it, so now we're at line two, does it again. So we have line two is second seven syllables. That's the same line right there. And then it increments again and gets to line three by doing the same thing right down here and prints out the third line. That's all there is. You're gonna see a lot of incrementing as we go through, as we start setting up loops on things, but this is a great way of stepping through a file or stepping through some data one bit at a time, performing an operation and then outputting it. Anyhow, that's exercise 20. Hope that helps and I'll see you soon.